What's going on guys? Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. And in this video, we're going to talk about the V1 cut. I'm going to uncover some very, very important key principles for you in the V1 cut. Namely, the number one most important thing on any V1 cut to maintain wings level. Okay, I'm going to share with you exactly how to do that, why this is the primary objective, and some tips and tricks that I'm going to offer to you to hopefully help you in doing this, not only in the V1 cut, but also on the single engine go around the climb out. Really, at any phase of operation when operating single engine. I've got many videos like this both on YouTube, on other social media platforms, and even inside of our online ground school at OneStepPrep.com. But a recent sim event that we did with a student that was having an issue with the V1 cut, I was able to identify where the issue lied and we were able to not only serve the student, but solve and provide a good solution for him. And he was ultimately able to correct this issue. I'm going to share it with you right here, right now. Let's get into this. So with the V1 cut, the reason I say wings level is the primary number one thing to keep in mind is because let's first look at the FAA tolerances of the V1 cut. And what I'm going to show you here, a top down profile view of the runway. Basically, the FAA says, in our case here, uh, I'm using the FAA because, of course, we're a U.S.-based academy. But really, I would imagine it applies wherever you're flying in the world. We want to maintain runway center line within plus or minus, five, or runway heading, I should say, within plus or minus five degrees. So if my runway heading here is, let's say, a heading of about 045, uh, ideally, I'm going to fly straight down, right, that heading. But I could go as far right and still be within tolerances as 050, and I could go over here to 040, but ideally, obviously, we're tracking 045. Now, the way we're going to do that ultimately is, of course, maintaining wings level. And the reason I'm emphasizing this is because many instructors are going to share with you, you got to step on the ball, step on the beta target, trim the rudder pressure, get into all this stuff about what you need to do. But what I want to first share with you is, not necessarily how you're going to do it, but what you're doing, why you're doing it first, and then we're going to get to the how part. We've got to build this thing like bricks to have a solid foundation. So the reason that wings level is so important is because, number one, it's what ensures the safe operation of the airplane. We don't want to be uh, banking or rocking back and forth, risking potential exceedance of this, or worst case, a really bad exceedance or even flipping, right? So wings level is what's going to ensure that we stay safe and well within the tolerances. Now, how do we do that, Joe? And the primary reason, as we've now established, is to ensure that we are able to keep a safe and well uh, a tolerant maneuver here. The main thing is paralleling of the center line. Now, I'm going to put here a couple things on the board. Obviously, you saw me put a goal post, an arrow, right? So we're going to set up this lesson, and we're going to dissect each segment of it in detail. So let's say for the purpose of this video that the number one engine has failed, and assume these are our rudder pedals down here, both left and right, respectively. And let's say you did nothing with your rudder pressure. I mean, you literally didn't touch the rudder. Which way would I naturally expect for the aircraft to turn? And of course, it's going to go off into the direction of that engine, which in this case would be the left, right? And of course, we're going to need to apply a little bit of right rudder in this case to parallel the center line. Now, listen closely to what I'm saying. We want to parallel the center line, not necessarily go back on top of the center line, but parallel. And the reason why is as follows. You see, the number uh, in terms of how much rudder pressure, how much rudder pressure is required for any given V1 cut is, or any single engine operation for that matter, is primarily the direct result of a couple of key factors, thrust and airspeed. More thrust, more rudder required. Less thrust, less rudder required. More airspeed, more effective rudder, less rudder pressure required. Less airspeed, less effective, more pressure required. Now forget about the less and the more and the more and the less and the less and the more and the more and the less. Forget about all that stuff for a second, okay? Let me simplify this real simple. Let's assume for a second that I put you at the end of the runway in a sim, which I do this all the time when I'm training this. And we're not going to actually rotate. In fact, we're just going to roll down the runway. And I'm going to fail an engine. And all I want you to do is parallel the center line. And when we end up getting towards the later part of the runway, and it looks like we're almost at a runway, I'm going to freeze the sim. I'm going to reposition this back. Now we're going to apply the same rudder tactic. And finally, we're going to rotate off the runway. And here's what we're going to find, OK? So you're rolling down this runway. And when the engine fails, all right? Naturally, it's going to veer off 
the center line slightly and you're going to correct and now we're paralleling the center line and of course as you're coming over to the profile view as you're rolling down this runway the airspeed is increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing and of course as the airspeed increases my rudder surface back here is more and more effective right directly with the amount of air flow that is increasing over the vertical stabilizer and in this case rudder. Now because that rudder is more effective, yeah, because it's more effective, I need less of it. Now here's what was happening to this student. This student was figuring out that, hey, my engine failed. I need right rudder pressure. They're applying right rudder pressure. And let's say they're applying 10 pounds of pressure. Now I don't know if that's the case because we didn't measure it. Fact of the matter is it doesn't really matter. But here's what you want to take away. The 10 pounds of rudder pressure that are being applied were satisfactory at this moment when the airspeed was at V1 somewhere around 140 knots. But because you're paralleling the center line and you're delaying your rotation slightly to make sure you're paralleling, by the time you actually finally get to the rotation point and pass that rotation speed, you're no longer at 140, you're actually upwards of say 150. And what you'll find is if you keep rolling further and further and further and further down the runway and the airspeed is increasing, 155, 160, 165. Now I'm not saying do this, but remember the earlier scenario that I said where we're going to roll down the runway, we're not going to rotate off, and we're just going to observe aerodynamics for a second. And what we would observe is that the airplane, upon its deviation, okay, let's draw this a little bit cleaner over here. So it deviated slightly off the center line right here. We applied rudder pressure sufficiently to parallel the center line. And as the airspeed increased, if you no longer change this 10 pounds of pressure and you kept it constant, same rudder pressure, what you're going to find is with a higher airspeed, the airplane is going to begin to yaw back to the right because the same amount of rudder pressure with a higher airspeed yields a more effective rudder. So what I'm getting at is if you roll down the runway and you apply rudder pressure and you leave that rudder pressure there and the airspeed keeps building, eventually you're going to have too much rudder pressure to parallel the center line and you're going to end up not paralleling at all but actually going the opposite direction. So what was happening to this particular candidate is that he was delaying the rotation too much. And I kept, and I got to take a little bit of credit of this because I'm saying, hey, parallel center line, parallel center line, parallel center line, right? And he's doing it. He's paralleling the center line. And the moment he's paralleling the center line, he's holding it there too long. And he starts finally rotating, but the rotation is happening well beyond the point of rotation. And unfortunately, at an airspeed and a rudder input that is excessive and actually now driving him off the opposite direction to the way that the engine actually failed to begin with. Now, the solution, the remedy to this. That's great, Joe. How do I fix it? Okay, because if I don't give you a solution, why would you be watching the video? Okay, so that's, at least that's my approach to everything. I need solutions, solution mindset. So the solution to this, folks, is basically to apply rudder pressure to the point of paralleling the, cent <coughs> excuse me, the, the center line. And once we parallel the center line, immediately begin your rotation. You want to begin the rotation because remember what affects the amount of rudder input that is required. Thrust and airspeed. Now in this particular scenario, because we're taking off, takeoff thrust is applied and takeoff thrust is not varying. It is fixed. So this one, despite the fact that it is one of these variables that affects rudder, this variable is currently not varying because it's at takeoff thrust. So I really don't need to worry too much about this one. But airspeed, on the other hand, is varying because we're rolling down the runway. And what I want to do is apply this rudder to a point of paralleling the center line. And when we finally have that established, which is not going to take too long to do, frankly, we immediately and smoothly begin the rotation so that we don't allow the airspeed to accelerate away from us. And we're also rotating closer to that rotation point, crucial to ensure second segment climb compliance. All right, we're airborne now, okay? So now we've smoothly rotated off. And what we want to make sure of, and any, any of you that follow this channel and you've seen other V1 Cup videos, or perhaps you've gone into our uh, online program, which by the way, let me just take an opportunity to share with you. We train the 737 Classic and NG and also the A320 here at One Step Prep. We have a complete online video course for you that is basically how to pass a type rating on video with very practical, fun, easy, energetic explanations like this one. 
go grab that if you're even thinking about it. Stop thinking and just go grab it. I'm telling you it's well worth it and we should charge more than we do for it. Go, cra go grab it. And if you want to train in person, you can come here and do that as well. Now, going back to this, okay, we have our smooth rotation. And what we want to make sure that we don't do, do not do, is pitch above the flight director like what I'm about to draw. Let's say your flight director's down here. Hopefully we can see that pretty well on the camera. It looks like we can. If you pitch above the flight director, folks, I am telling you right now, your airspeed will now begin to drop. And as airspeed reduces, airflow over the vertical stabilizer and rudder reduces. And as this reduces, the need for additional rudder pressure increases. And now you're going to need pressure to the point that you may even run out of total available rudder authority. You won't have any more authority because you have yielded uh, your or rendered your vertical stab stabilizer and rudder basically ineffective because your airspeed has decayed to a point of not having sufficient airflow over the aerodynamic surface. So, repeat after me. Don't go above the flight director. Let's do that one more time. Don't go above the flight director. Let's repeat it a third time. Don't go above the flight director, okay? Well, a fourth time. Don't go above the flight director, okay? If you come train with me in person, guess what I'm going to tell you? Don't go above the flight director. So you don't want to go above the flight director. So you want to make sure that you are in the flight director, you're having trouble tracking the flight director. Okay, go below it. Don't go above it. Even if you were below it, I would be happier than you going above it. I, ideally, you're in it. But the point I'm making is, as long as we don't have the speed decay happening and speed is on our side, we're happy. We're happy, yeah? So, smooth, let's rewind. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. We're paralleling the center line. We're smoothly rotating off, and as we smoothly rotate off, the, so the second thing to do, this is really the third thing to do, is make sure the wings are level. So number one, parallel the center line. Number two, wings level. As soon as you get airborne, immediately, you're airborne. Wings level, wings level, wings level, or the wings level, or the wings level. Why? Because I don't want to flip. Why? Because I don't want to go outside of the tolerances set out by our governing authority, the FAA. Wings level. Got to have them level. Now, if you're wobbling, it's likely that you didn't do the first task effectively. If you're wobbling here, it's because you didn't parallel over here. Plain and simple. Now, if you're doing well on the parallel, you're going to rotate off with wings level, and immediately now, I'm going to look to pitch. Pitch. What is my pitch over here saying? My pitch is saying, make sure I'm pitching into the flight director, not above it, so that we don't end up with an airspeed decay. So pitch is directly related with a check of my airspeed to ensure I'm keeping speed on my side. Now once I've done these three things appropriately, the next thing I'm going to do is look to center the beta target if you fly the A320. And if you don't, and what I just said doesn't mean anything to you, then step on the ball. It's the same thing. Coordinate the flight. So we're going to either step on the ball in the case of a 73 or really any other airplane, or step on the beta target, which is pretty much the same thing as any other airplane because airplanes are more similar than they are different. Talk all about that in other videos. Coordinate the flight. So we center the beta target or we step on the ball. And now we begin to trim the pressure and we trim the pressure off of our foot. And finally, when we trim the pressure off of our foot, we engage the autopilot. And now we are in a good position to look to do either the memory items, the ECAM actions, and what comes next. So, parallel to center line, rotate off, make sure I'm wings level, pitch to retain airspeed on my side, trim the pressure, actually, uh, back up, back up, center beta target or step on the ball, okay, so step on the ball, also known as beta target in a 320, if you fly a 320, okay. After you do this step, which would technically be number four, number five, trim, and number six, autopilot. Now, if you're looking at this and you're like, man, Joe, you just gave me six steps to do and I don't know that I'm going to remember all six of them, okay, I'm just going to give you one step to do then. Keep the wings level. <laughs> if you keep the wings level, you see, this is really what I'm trying to attain, yeah? Uh, what I'm trying to do is make, take, keep wings level. Because if I keep wings level, everyone's going to survive. And we're going to stay within the tolerances. It's going to be a great day, yeah? So I want to keep wings level. Now, these six steps is really the how behind how we're going to actually comply with what we're trying to do and why we're trying to do it. So this is what I'm trying to do, the why behind why I'm trying to do it, and how you're going to do it. And if those of you that want to instruct 
this way and break things down with a what and a how and a why and exactly how we do this, ax3certification.com. Okay, I got to let you know everything that we offer here at onestepprep.com and how we deliver it with all the energy. And that's a great program for you if you're interested in teaching. So keep the wings level. Keep the wings level. Yeah. And finally, now we can go towards uh, the ECAM, as I mentioned, or the memory items. Now, a lot of instructors, what they're going to share with you is uh, they won't organize it like this, right? They may just say, hey, when we uh, get airborne, you got to apply some rudder and make sure you trim it off and get that beta target centered. So all that sounds good and you're going to go out and do it. But if you really don't have a framework with a structure and steps, because as humans, we love steps and bullet points. You notice a lot of our emails that we send go out with steps, bullet points, exact blueprint, easy to understand. We learn best this way. I'm just telling you, this is a proven concept that we learn, learn that way, right? So what I want to do is lay out here these six simple steps that lead to the ultimate, what we're trying to accomplish and the why, and hopefully now you understand how you're going to do this. Now, within our program online, I do like to also talk about the single engine go around. The single engine go around is a little bit different than the V1 cut only because we don't have center line reference, so there's nothing to really parallel, but there are some tips, tricks, and techniques that I could offer to you and do inside of our online course as to how you can master the single engine go around. As always, I hope you found value in the video. I'd love, 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 nothing more for you to leave some comments below, show us some love, like, share, subscribe, and if you haven't already done so, go check us out on onestepprep.com. Love to have you join our 1SP family. And if you're in Miami, stop by. And I would love to sit down, talk airplanes with you, talk career with you, have a coffee with you, and get to know you a little bit more. Gentlemen, is the name. Quantuming is your friend in training program success. I'll see you in another video.